It was the Glan Avon Comprehensive where Bennett first took to the stage. Did you used to have these school productions in there? You know, this you is the here? first place I ever acted. The head teacher is keen that he isn't late for this class. Do you think I can be told off? No, I think you're told off. Hello. This is Miss Farrell. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello there. Okay. This is something they do every year? Yes, this part of the GCSE history curriculum. But many of these do RE GCSE and they study Judaism. It's part of that as well. So and we went to the Holocaust exhibition, which was harrowing but interesting. When I was in school, this wasn't touched on it at all. It was never taught, was it? Never taught, oh. never, never, never mentioned at all. Well, I knew, obviously, like, about the Holocaust and all that, but I never knew, like, so much in depth. Right. So it's quite interesting to learn all about it and all. But it's still sad to me. Yeah, no, no, of yeah. course. Bennett's family were already in Wales when Jews were rounded up and sent to the concentration camps, where six million men, women and children were murdered. When I was in Poland, I went to Auschwitz, and if you ever get the opportunity, I mean, it's, you know, it's not a theme park. If you've got a chance to go, it, it's just really uh, incredible. I mean, one, one of the, the, the most awful things I saw was that there's, there's one room that's got um, just a glass front. It's, it's, the whole wall is glass, you can see, and behind it is hair, just, just uh, mainly women and children's hair that's been cut off. So there's that room, and then there's another room which is just full of children's toys that they were taking off them. The fact that they're working now on the Holocaust, and that's one of the things that they do every year, is incredible. I mean, we didn't do it when I was here, and now even further away from when the event happened, that they're, they're studying it, and they're interested in it. I wasn't expecting that. No Jews remain in Port Albert, and the Jews living in the valleys have also disappeared. Currently in North Wales, there are only about 50 Jews left, but hopes are that their numbers will remain stable. Most of Wales' Jews are still to be found in Cardiff, yet now there are only two synagogues, a massive decline from its zenith when the Principality boasted seven. Well, this is the Cardiff Synagogue, and uh, I'm going to see a Jewish Welsh male voice choir. Good evening. Hello. These are members of Cardiff's last remaining Orthodox Jewish congregation. Nice to see you. We last met at the comedy club. <laughs> we came to see you. Oh, at the Glee? At the Glee, yeah. Of course. Yeah, we were part of the, part of the audience. That's so where your folks were there. They were there. That's right. That was, a, that was an interesting evening. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a chair, Bennett. What? Grab a chair. Oh, I'm not singing, honestly. Well, sing with us, <sighs> There was a time when the Cardiff Choir were gigging all over the country. A few years ago, we actually made a produced and made a CD, and there's one or two copies left if people are interested. <laughs> one or two boxes, of hundreds <laughs> left. Next door, the synagogue itself has a capacity of 150, but typically fewer than 40 people attend on the Sabbath. And these days, the choir too struggles to attract members. How many are in the? In the uh, well, there are more than this, but this is what uh, three, five, six, seven here tonight. And it's not just the synagogue's choir that struggles. Is there a growth in Cardiff, or is it also on a decline as other places? Um, decline. It is. The truth of the matter is, it's declining everywhere. Bennett's realising that he's one of the many Jews who have abandoned Wales to seek their fortune elsewhere. And most, just like him, have gone to London. So apparently it's the fault of me and my generation that there's such a decline of Jews in Wales. He heads back to Swansea to his parents' synagogue, where the decline is even greater than in Cardiff. Here, there are less than 20 people attending services. The synagogue's future is uncertain, 
as Jewish law requires a minion, a minimum of 10 men over the age of 13, to perform communal daily prayers. Somebody in the synagogue at the service the other day, because the men and women sit separately, you see, the men sit in the front, and second-class citizens, which are the women, we sit behind. <laughs> and one man turned round and he started to laugh. I said, why are you laughing at me? And I'm 71, and he said, you're the youngest member in the community at, at, at the service. So I thought, my God, at 71, and it just reached home to think that we're such an Asian community now. People moved away, like the Bennets of this world, and all our children moved to go away for university or for work or better prospects, found their, uh, their marriage partners and made a life where there were more viable communities. So really we've been left now as a very small community. I really just realised the fact that in, what, 30, 40 years' time, there might not be any Jews left in Swansea. So from a huge community to having nobody at all. It's a sad thought. Bennett's been studying the documents he's collected on his journey and discovered that his mother's grandparents are linked with the last surviving Jews of Tredegar. Now, you said to me that you had family there. I did. Who was there? Your great-grandmother was Ellen Fine. And she married? Morris Cohen, who wasn't from Tredegar, and I don't know how they met. Well, that's the interesting thing. I was given a list of weddings that happened in Tredegar, and look, watch the 26th side Oh my gosh! And in time. <gasps> How old was she? 22. And Morris Cohen. Oh. There you go. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, I'm so glad you showed me that. Good. Great emotion. Uncovering the wider history of the Welsh Jews, as well as performing his stand up for the first time in his hometown, has been a revealing experience for Bennett. I sometimes feel like I've got a rabbi on one shoulder and a dragon on the other, uh, which would be a brilliant name for a pub, I think. The dragon and rabbi. <laughs> it would only serve bitter and the head of the pint would be missing. <laughs> and talking about beer, and I have this a lot, one of the other reasons uh, I, I do the show, is that people say to me, what's it like, you know, you, you're Jewish, you're not allowed to drink. No, Jews can drink, it's when I let my Welsh side take over. <laughs> Do you know what? It's been an emotional few days, and it's been interesting learning about my family. It's been interesting learning about what happened to other Jews in Wales, and it's been sad knowing what the future holds, really. Thank you very much for coming, uh, and I hope to see you again. Good night. And the next episode of New Wales can be seen on Monday at 10.35 here on BBC One Wales. Details next.